Kumar Ketkar, editor of Dainik Divya uh, Marathi. You have had an extremely controversial career. You were with the Economic Times for 20 years, yes. But then since then, a lot has happened in your life and perhaps the way you have functioned as a journalist will give us an insight on how journalism in fact reacts to people like you. Could you tell us what happened in Lok Sattva? Well, actually I was in Lok Sattva for about eight and a half years and those were the most, uh, you can say, you know, turbulent years even in Indian politics and politics in Maharashtra. Because in Delhi when I joined, it was a BJP government in which Shiv Sena was also participating. And Shiv Sena, BJP government was there till 1999 in Maharashtra. So that kind of atmosphere prevailed. Though Congress government had come along with NCP in Maharashtra, the atmosphere was full of BJP Sena kind of atmosphere. And therefore, uh, I was, I have always been, I mean by conviction, uh, I am not as open-minded or objective as many people would expect me to be. I am against the communal forces, the linguistic chauvinist forces. So I am against the politics of Shiv Sena. I am against the politics of BJP and against the RSS. And so naturally, in that sense, I am not objective. I will not judge, you know, secular organization and RSS on the equal footing. Well, if somebody says that therefore I am biased, yes, I am biased and I do not mind being biased. But thankfully, I must say that uh, Indian Express Group or Lok Sattva, where I belonged, they also did not enforce me to follow a certain line, the so-called objective line. That doesn't mean that I was deliberately unfair to RSS. I was never. It's a question of views. In news, I never compromised. In news, whatever the genuine news was, even that news, you know, sort of pro-RSS tilt was there to the news, I did not mind. What would be a pro-RSS? Pro-RSS could be now various types of RSS leader speeches would come. Those speeches would be naturally tilted in favor of Hindutva, in favor of uh, as if Hindutva is superior to being Indian. And uh, if whatever headline you chose of the speech or of the interview or of the discussion conducted by RSS, that will naturally favor RSS. I did not stop that. I did not mind that. So even if it appeared as if uh, it is supporting RSS, I did not mind that. As long as my editorial line was concerned, that is only editorial. I did not mind even articles or features which were supporting RSS or supporting Shiv Sena. But my editorial line used to be, you can say, against the communal line and against the linguistic chauvinism. Mm. But apparently that used to hurt them, despite the fact that I did not stop Hurt any new the ownership. Item. Hurt the, not ownership, hurt the Shiv Sena leadership, mm. local as well as so-called national leadership of the BJP and the RSS and they were always against me in their so-called mouth bases or later on Facebook. That time Facebook didn't exist in 2002 or later. So when the Facebook came and all that, the hate mail against me was huge. Your Facebook page is full of insults and abuse. Lots of it. And I don't have Facebook myself. I don't go on Facebook. but. Uh, there is some Facebook prepared in my name and people otherwise are full of, I mean, they hate me for being stridently, as they call it, anti-RSS. So naturally, she would say, you cannot afford to be in the water and be against fish here. So Maharashtra and particularly Mumbai, you will see majority of the Marathi speaking Maharashtrians in Mumbai having not sympathies, but active sympathies for Shiv Sena. What so is naturally, the difference between sympathies and active sympathies? Uh, sympathies means I can understand people saying that, well, you know, without Shiv Sena, Maharashtrians would not have had the kind of respect they have in city. Simply saying that in a drawing room or in a lunch room is understandable. That you can say is passive sympathy to uh, Shiv Sena. But active sympathy means actually violently participating in some kind of action. Violently doesn't always mean beating you up, but violently means also protesting, demonstrating in office, outside office, and any neighborhood or any social atmosphere. And that is quite, quite common in Mumbai particularly more than rest of Maharashtra. Mm. So naturally, I was operating in hostile atmosphere. Luckily, I could survive as it were is because I told them, well, you are absolutely free to publish your viewpoint countering you Shiv Sena mm. or Shiv Sena leadership. You are absolutely free to publish in my newspaper countering my editorial against you. I will publish that. But that doesn't mean you should tell me what I should write in my editorial columns against you. But apparently, 
the editorial columns in the Indian Express as well as in Lok Sabha, were sort of having more respectability and trust value than perhaps their articles because their articles naturally appeared defending them, mm. whereas our articles were supposed to be so called objective and therefore. My criticism of Shiv Sena and my criticism of RSS angered them and made them more hostile. So there were actually several occasions uh, uh, in which I had to face a very very hostile crowd, and actually, at at least two times I would have been killed. Literally, I mean, I don't How want to this, boast. What uh, happened? I don't want to boast about. You know, I am not a very brave person in the sense that I don't go about uh, you know fighting and shouting and beating people. So in that sense, I will not call myself brave, but I will not succumb to the pressure, be it from the management or from any political party or from the government. I will not succumb to that pressure. That much you can say boldness I have. Can what you take you us through what happened? You wrote a piece which they objected to. Yeah, not just that piece. There was another piece which I wrote. Actually, that began. Uh, that piece was uh, they had invited me to inaugurate a conference of all India Brahmins, and. Uh, it was obviously partly supported sponsored by the rss it was in parvani in maratwada and it had attendance of something like 30000 people which i did not know when i went for inauguration so in my how did they invite you yeah in fact i told them that you are inviting me for a brahmin conference mm. they said yes we want another point of view i said i will be very critical of the very mobilization as brahmins i will be critical of that so he said yeah yeah but we must necessarily you know educate brahmins make them more aware of the changes taking place in the world so we would like person like you a secular person like you addressing brahmin gathering i was surprised to find more than 30000 brahmins gathered in a huge pandal and i spoke i said uh, uh, i am also brahmin by birth but i am not proud of it and i consider that earlier definition of brahmin was whoever knows or whoever is studying or who is keen to have knowledge or have wisdom is a brahmin or was supposed to be a brahmin according to the old classical definition so for me dr baba saheb ambedkar is a brahmin mohammed peygamber is a brahmin and karl marx is a brahmin and jesus christ is a brahmin and sigmund freud is also a brahmin so anybody who pursues knowledge anybody who is knowledgeable anybody who is wise is a brahmin and i said uh, if i was born in pakistan in a muslim family i would have been a muslim uh, i would have my religion would have been muslim if i was born in america in american family perhaps i would have been eating beef like in pakistan also i would be eating in fact then i said many of my brahmin friends said settle in america today eat beef so i don't think uh, eating beef is a crime even by your caste logic at that time uh, brahmin community had boycotted ravi shastri for mm. saying on television that he ate beef so then i went on and on saying that uh, really asking for trouble and then they started first uh, protest started from the audience then they started coming towards the stage then they wanted to grab me then my jacket was taken out my mic was thrown and then i was virtually pushed out of the stage and they about 250 men and boys came almost to beat me and unfortunately there was no police there were only two policemen there but by that time the word had gone out that shouting had started and policemen started coming policemen could not even come so i was pushed into one wireless jeep and uh, when wireless jeep started going towards police station they followed me with stones and lathis and they actually you will not believe they locked me up in a police custody because they said this is the only way we can keep you safe in a police custody mm-hmm. because that has those steel bars yeah, and all yeah. that so i was there in police custody not a, as any awarded uh, custody of police but to protect me and then after about 3 4 hours i was taken by a kind of a different route to aurangabad from parvani at night because they were continuously following me and the local newspapers defending them were continuously saying please follow kumar ketkar and all that so that went on but that could not be covered television on television live because nobody knew such thing would happen but when the news came Uh, there were questions in assembly why mr ketkar was not protected and so on and so forth that was the first it could have been a genuinely fatal attack because later on they came with petrol you know kind of barrels and all that so it was quite tough about 5 6 years ago but doesn't that say a lot about the state that when they want to protect someone or where they should be protecting someone when someone is in danger such as you look at the other situations salman rushdie or mf hussain 
or the, even the girls who are on Valentine's Day, whoever, they will not uh, go after the goons, but they will ask the person who is is being objected to to not appear or to not come, yeah. which means the victim is like you put in jail while the goons run free. You are absolutely right because I have defended girls on Valentine's Day and all these things. I have defended Hussein. I, you know, condemned the criti critics of Hussein from the RSS kind and those who vandalized these exhibitions. So uh, actually, I became their target because of. I was defending Hussein, I was defending Valentine Day and so on and so forth. So, but strangely, while the first attack me was from the Brahmins or Brahminized RSS, the second attack on me was that of Marathas mm -hmm. who are supposed to be anti-Brahmin and because uh, for the simple reason that I objected to them having 1000 crore rupees statue in the Arabian Sea of uh, Shivaji Maharaj, I said Shivaji Maharaj himself, himself described as people's uh, ruler and he would have objected to this kind of a statue himself. He would have said first feed the children, first send them to schools if he was alive today he would have said that yeah. and you are spending 1000 crore rupees which is more than a primary education budget that you have. So why don't you spend money for that? Merely that for saying. They said I am anti Shivaji Maharaj and therefore they attacked my house. It just so happened that my wife realized that too many people are coming towards house and shouting slogans and they carried you know cycle chains and lattes and things like that mm -hmm. and but for my door did not get open despite their continuous banging on it that uh, me and my wife said we were inside but they realized the door is not getting open so they threw so many painted so many stones that my house was full for next three four days of stones and mud and then they put tar on my windows and you know kind of things and uh, unfortunately for them in a way uh, and fortunately I won't say fortunately exactly but uh, some might say uh, they had brought TV cameramen they did not know the TV chaps did not know channel chaps did not know what was going to happen they said we are going to protest uh, in front of Mr. Ketka's house so we want you to record the pro protest so they invited two TV channel people who brought their camera and they actually shot the whole attack on my house mm. and that time unlike in the Brahmin agitation uh, this time it was put on live on TV as the attack was taking place and me and my wife were uh, inside the house uh, seen from the window and then uh, they interviewed me the channel NDTV and uh, those people interviewed right inside the house at that time and uh, that's why it became sort of I mean the reason you are asking because that became nationally or perhaps globally But it's known. interesting that um, I've seen in my experience in journalism, very often people invite the TV channels because in spite of what they plan to do, they think they're doing the right thing. They so deeply believe that even if it is violent, they so feel um, self-righteous about their beliefs that even violence is something that they think is, should be recorded and they want to boast about it that we we did our duty. I think it's correct because Sri Ram Sene people also had invited uh, TV cameramen when they attacked women and girls mm -hmm. going to restaurants and bars. So they had also invited channels and they thought that they are protecting Hindu culture or uh, some Hindu tradition uh, by asking girls not to go to restaurants and open bars. So I think they I think they wrongly believe. I don't think it is just self righteousness. I think it is a kind of uh, uh, Matro and uh, feeling that we can override, we can actually carry on Gundaism and you know sort of establish atmosphere of terror and threat. Like those who watch that particular TV clip will be afraid next time of saying something because what kind of wrath it will invite. I think they want to show that also. Well, there's a lot of self-censorship in our journalism today. Um, because yes, I mean, if you see the reactions to this film, um, this so-called anti-Islamic film, which yeah, I think yeah. is actually an anti-intelligence film, it's, yeah, really, yeah, yeah. it's stupid, it's a stupid yeah, film. Yeah. The kind of reactions that have been expressed worldwide, um, violence and mindless where they're in Pakistan burning their own cinemas yeah. and their own cars in their own country, when they're objecting to something that a filmmaker in, in California has has done uh, is completely illogical. But 
do you think that it is affecting journalism in such a way that more and more censorship from the authorities as well as self censorship is taking place now actually censorship from authorities is not taking place much and perhaps because technology cannot uh, really respond but they are attempting it uh, mr they are attempting but technology is far too advanced for uh, maybe but you know if you look at the fact that they have in they one of the few countries that we have the killer switch where they can switch off the internet completely the it act 2008 includes uh, now has an amendment includes that if anyone sends an ele electronic message that even causes annoyance or inconvenience that uh, person can be act they've tried to put in um uh, uh, without anyone knowing secretly working on an anti privacy law in which an investigation can be stopped dead in the tracks that if a politician for example objects to his inv invasion of priv privacy taking place that journalist will not be, not only not be allowed to investigate he will have to pay um 50 lakhs in in penalty and uh, go to jail for 5 years the organization can be closed down or suspended for 11 months all these things are happening and what happened in in uh, you know um asim's case asim of course that's the obvious case 300 websites being uh, blocked they uh, couple civil asking uh, facebook google yahoo to remove content out of 355 258 were anti government meaning criti criticism of the government or kept couple had asked to be removed only 3 were related to pornography and one on national security makande kachu has asked for passed a resolution asking for powers that would uh, again the same thing five cross in fine suspension of publication jail all this if you, if you cross the line so these are very uh, yeah actually these are problems. alarming signs definitely i entirely agree with you but i think uh, if i remember well shekhar gupta wrote a piece on uh, why censorship and self self censorship you know converse sometimes but i have also feeling that uh, sometimes the media persons also go overboard in not realizing as you very correctly said that so called anti islam film is not a question of freedom of expression it is so unintelligent such a stupid and such an uncultured film that uh, for me as a media person for me to clear it on my channel or in my press writing about it i think is below par below my dignity below my human decency cultural and civilizational decency to publicize that and yet if somebody does that in the name of the freedom of the press i think it is crossing the border i think it is trespassing the lim cultural limits and therefore the question of censorship comes the moment something like this happens the authorities which are authorities they may be it is not as if one particular government will do this and another will not do that if you remember uh, bjp government uh, i think sushma swaraj was and be minister she wanted to block all uh, fashion channels yeah at that point of time and some hindi movies and some so called uh, south indian movies uh, shown at night so they wanted to block even at that so i think it's not a question of which party or which ideology government communist governments are not known to be sympathetic to freedom of press at all so for them the question does not arise but those who talk in the name of freedom of press like bjp on the one hand congress on the other even they have been trying to stop but also we must recognize that media managers or professionals do not distinguish between what is freedom of the press and what is trespassing the freedom of the press i think it is not a self censorship question it is question of understanding the decency and the medium is the message or message is the medium that distinction has to be properly understood often the media persons do not and for last 20 years i think what has happened is technology has overtaken the content so much that the managers of content that is the professional journalists are unable to cope with the technology and the content relationship as a result whatever you say has a validity in terms of freedom of press to go to people which is what is happening on twitter and blogs and facebook which is fine i have no problem on that but point is the belief that that is part of the cultural progress part of the civilizational progress part of the freedom of expression expansion i think that is being immature if not idiotic sometimes and therefore uh, authorities get advantage to pull the plug because of the immaturity of the media persons or the media managers the authorities 
the dictatorial authorities, autocratic authorities get an opportunity. So I think it is media person's responsibility, not of self-censorship, responsibility to see that by their action they are not inviting the action from the state. I think it is a... I don't see the connection actually because even if there are foolish reports, wrong reports, there are many other recourses to fix those. But using... Yeah, uh, well, there are people like, for example, the Duchess of Cambridge has filed a suit against the French magazine for publishing her pictures. In India also this has happened for defamation. In fact, Indira Gandhi sued um, uh, Salman Rushdie for one sentence and uh, in Midnight's Children. Yeah. So, uh, you know, there are many film stars who've done it for defamation. Many other people have done it. But the fact is that for an, any government, particularly Congress, has been in the forefront in banning books, films, not allowing films to be shot in this country. Um, they have been in the forefront historically in banning whatever suits them politically. Yeah, I think Congress and BJP are, can be compared on the, that plinth. See, the because BJP, BJP sends banned out, uh, Hussein. No, you see, BJP sends out goons. They don't ban anything. No, but Hussein's pictures in Gujarat were ultimately the exhibition was banned. Yes, but you see... And what, in Mumbai. Uh, Hussein's exhibition in, I think, Jahangir was uh, asked to be stopped, but here it was Kong, uh, uh, Shiv Sena government at time. So, which means that all so governments all are... Gov all authorities tend to always exercise their, you know, kind of a writ. All authorities, irrespective of the party or for that matter ideology, as I said. Well, Communists do it, BJP does it, Congress does it. The moment you are in authority and you do not tolerate something, you attack it. Point is whether which is the freedom of expression and which is actually a calumna and a canard, that distinction sometimes media men do not understand. And that is because not is their fault, not they are unintelligent. The fact is the technology has overtaken so much that today, you know that suppose this film was made in the pre-internet era, this anti so called anti-Islam film was made in the pre-internet era where you could not really uh, take it all to the globe. Mm. It would not it have created died. so much a problem. Yeah. Perhaps a news item would have come in the newspapers mm. all over the world that this has happened and they would have stopped. I mean, it and would not, not have created riots. But the fact is about 100 people have been killed mm. now. And uh, 100 people have been killed. Majority of them have not seen the film. Majority of them have not seen the st absolute nonsense and the stupidity of the film. Mm. But they are just fed with the rumors. And the rumors are triggered essentially by the net. I think also Facebook. in so those particular countries, it's a vote bank that is encouraged by politicians to show po to, for politicians to say that we are we are on this position and it builds their base in doing it. Now coming back to you. No, but here one more point needs to be mentioned. Yes. You know, uh, have you ever seen uh, on any American channel the plane that crashed on Pentagon? The moment you talk of 9-11, they will only show World Trade Center. Yes, they will that? not. They will not show Pentagon. Fourthly, they will not show that plane which crashed in Pittsburgh, mm. because apparently that Pittsburgh the plane that crashed at Pittsburgh was supposed to be, according to American authorities, going to White House to bomb White House, whatever. Well, there are pictures of the Pittsburgh crash. Very few, and generally when 9-11 is mentioned, Pentagon it is only is World there. Trade Center. Is Why mentioned. is that? Because I think they are afraid to spread that message. And moreover... Spread the message of reaction in America yeah. that go after them. Yeah. So I think... Because they are going after them themselves. Even I think California State uh, stopped that anti-Islam film. No, it hasn't. The judge ruled. Judge ruled. But they stopped stop and then the judge ruled yeah. that they cannot stop. Yeah. yeah. But so the California the authorities wanted it to be stopped. Yeah, but actually it was the f one of the actresses who, tri who filed a case saying that she wanted it stopped. Yeah, and the act also threats. we didn't know what uh, actually yeah. film was made about. And the, ju and the judge says it. You, yeah, so judge has. Uh, now coming back yeah. to you, what happened in Lok Sattah? Were you asked to leave? No. What happened? Nothing. Ah, you are referring to that mail. Uh, yes. No, 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 no. I think that's completely misleading mail. Nobody asked me to. In fact, uh, after my resignation in Lok Sattah, they carried my name on the print line for more than three weeks. I see. They wanted me to continue. Shekhar Gupta came to Mumbai and said, Kumar, why are you leaving? We want you here. Okay. And in fact, he said, I will give you a larger role, join the Indian Express uh, editorial board. Okay. And no, no, not at all. That was uh, spread by the RSS that I was asked to leave because they used to complain to chairman all the time that Mr. Ketkar is anti-RSS. I have over here a report saying that 
the Dapoli court issued or uh, uh, court issued or ordered police to register FIR against Divya Marathi editor Kumar Ketkar for his defamatory article in Lok, Lok Sabha. In uh, an RSS. In, in I'm, I, I'm still uh, in the case in Dapoli uh, High Court. What is hap what happened there? What no, did you write? In the, in the article I have said that Sangha Parivar has infiltrated in bureaucracy, in media, in the uh, law and order machinery and all that. So Sangha Parivar is the word used. So they said this is an insult and defamation of Sang. So Sang activists in Dapoli filed a case and said uh, that I, court must issue contempt because I have said about judiciary also. Mm. So court I think issued a notice but I have not issued summons afterwards, mm. have not been issued summons afterwards. The case has not yet appeared and I have told them that the case belongs to 2010 editorial and I stand by it and I am not going to apologize even if it means going to jail I am ready because I stand by every word I wrote. Even the RSS is spreading that I have apologized or something where... Yes, uh, that's what I read. I have not apologized. I have written in, in writing I have given to the court by my lawyer that I will not apologize. I don't think I have done anything wrong and I will stand by it even if whatever conviction comes. This is in writing. This is in okay. writing to the court via my lawyer. So there are reports all over the net. They are continuously spreading that, that I have apologized yes. and surrendered and I have put some middleman and all that. I read that. Somebody sent me. So, as a journalist, you're probably the most controversial journalist in India. I don't think that. I think so, because you're the only one who openly says, I'm not objective. You openly take a stand on issues. Yeah, yeah, I'm you're not You're openly anti-Sangh Parivar, yes, RSS, yeah. BJP, VHP. All right. At the time of uh, Anna, I was the only person initially uh, condemning Anna movement. And, and Be Baba because movement. you saw that they had support from the Sangh Parivar? Not only support from, because I think it was... Uh, quite a maverick and dictatorial movement and uh, in its nature, in its character it was dictatorial. It was not following a presumed and expected democratic standards of political movement. I have been in the political movement. I was before a journalist, I was an activist. I was activist in the student movement. So I have participated in activist uh, campaigns and therefore I know what uh, it means to be an activist. I think they were crossing all the borders and therefore I attacked them on all the channels and therefore at that point of time I received more hate mail than attacking RSS because in the earlier phase when on 5th April Anna started his hunger strike hmm. and on 16th August when he was morning he was arrested till December Mumbai uh, agitation of Anna I was continuously perhaps the only person attacking them and uh, attacking Anna movement and when all the TV channels were making him Indian of the year Man of the year, so saint you, of the year. You've been <laughs> accused on, uh, you know, all over about, for being uh, Sonia Gandhi's lackey, for being the Congress person's mouthpiece, for attacking Anna and BJP on all and uh, Shiv Sena on all these issues. So, do you see yourself as um, a journalist who is willing to take the Congress cause forward? I don't think so. I think when I attacked Anna first. Uh, when Anna was attacking uh, Shiv Sena BJP, at that time also attacked Anna. When Anna was attacking Congress, I also attacked Anna. Anna is new phenomenon for North or for rest of India. Yes. For us, he is a You've familiar face <laughs> from for long time. In Raleigan Siddhi, he's I part have, of the protest family. Yeah, in Raleigan Siddhi, he wants uh, oh, no Hindi film to be shown, no Hindi film music to be played. He wants only bhajans to be on, uh, you know, in public functions mm -hmm. and he doesn't want any bars, any restaurants, anywhere around. And so all that kind of, uh, according to me, saintly dictatorial ship, mm -hmm. which prevails in uh, Raleigh and Siddhi, we have attacked even then. So irrespective of when Anna was criticizing Congress or Anna was criticizing Shiv Sena BJP, when Anna was criticizing Shiv Sena BJP, I should have supported him mm -hmm. because I am also anti-Sena, anti-BJP, yeah. but I did not. I, did not like even Anna's movement at that time. So I don't think that. The second point of being quote unquote sympathetic to Sonia Gandhi, actually that uh, charge comes primarily because I was sympathetic to Indira Gandhi and not on emergency question only. I was sympathetic to Indira Gandhi between 1971 and 1973 when it exploded into a completely different phenomenon. So at that time, uh, I supported Indira Gandhi. After bank nationalization, 69 to 1972. I supported Mrs. Indira Gandhi and that's why the charge is stuck from there. So Sonia Gandhi actually did not exist from 1991 hmm. to 1998 and hmm. I was a journalist even then. I was 
आई वॉज इन इकोनॉमिक टाइम्स आई वॉज इन ऑब्जर्वर एंड देन आई वॉज चीफ एडिटर महाराष्ट्र टाइम्स एंड सोनिया गांधी वॉज नॉट इवन ऑन द होराइजन सो आई थिंक दैट चार्ज इज नॉट फिट बाय टाइम फ्रेम टिल नाइनटीन नाइन्टी एट नाइन्टी नाइन शी डिड नॉट हैव एनी पब्लिक पोस्टर एट ऑल शी केम इन नाइनटीन नाइन्टी एट अप्रिल एंड देन बिकेम प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ द पार्टी एंड हर रोल एज इट वेयर एक्चुअल रोल बिगिन्स इन नाइनटीन नाइन्टी नाइन आई रिजाइन a reader knows your uh, open uh, opinionated uh, political stance uh, don't you think it sort of um, undermines your credibility in terms of putting facts forward it would have if i had stopped their view appearing in wherever i am working if i had stopped the so called anti sonia anti congress articles or pro shiv sena pro bjp articles appearing in the place where i am chief editor i restrict my freedom of my views and so called my bias or so called my non objectivity only to my editorial or my byline signed articles i do not control i deliberately ask them i invite articles which confront and oppose my views and that's why my credibility as editor has not uh, gone yes. my credibility as my person they will question and they have a right to question because i openly say that i belong to certain views and uh, i will not compromise on that so that's why but i could not describe myself as the most controversial person there are what are your views on um, the police inaction in uh, azad maidan on august 11th i will not call it police police inaction i will call it police restraint hmm. i can tell you i am familiar with the entire thing and now as a editor from my reporters and photographers if that day police had acted it would have been something close to without exaggeration jallianwala bag please explain that to me because because were there were a, unexpected crowds i think no basically there were people we see on camera who are burning vans who are molesting a female constable misbehaving with people doing all kinds of violence um one is not asking them asking the police to shoot one is only asking them to arrest them yeah how would it have snowballed if they just arrested them i think the situation demanded conventionally speaking to shoot at sight if conventions were to be followed for this kind of vandalism police could have shot them at sight no, they and could there have could have been gas there could have been water cannons i don't think they, it had gone beyond tear gas so you you saying to me that and it, it was widespread tear no, gas so what i'm uh, saying is the choice is only between shooting and shooting, not doing anything no not doing anything is not arresting shooting Sorry? at shooting and arresting trying to arrest so they didn't shoot and they didn't arrest they could not arrest they did try to try to arrest no we saw on camera where uh, no but you didn't see on person. camera everything they tried to arrest but they did not shoot no but there was uh, i'm sure you saw that footage i saw it was where entire he's arrested somebody yeah. let that him that was go. wrong of course but he also admitted that was wrong no but the point was i think the fear was that if he goes on shooting spree I can tell you there were really no, but nobody's asked days. for a shooting spree. Why? But shooting presume? would have taken place. The moment they would, he would have given a little freedom to police, they would have shot. No. Police are trigger happy, as you know. I, 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 I really think that this thing of justifying not controlling a mob by saying that they would would have shot. Are you saying that our police is anarchy? Yes. Do you think that they will yeah. do whatever they like? Yeah. Often. Then why didn't they do it anyway? that's why that's why i have admire uh, arup patnaik that he could control and restrain himself no but then he could have controlled them from shooting also why say that you would i don't think you would have no you, once you, the shooting starts so how will you control there's so much hypothesis here a hypothetical belief that if you had allowed them to arrest they would have shot and be, be, because we will not no, be no, able I didn't to say that. Uh, but nai could not have been able to control the shooting but if he was able to control the arresting he could have controlled the shooting which is far worse it is easy to say but i don't think shooting can be controlled once the bullet goes you are just killed you But are just there how can dead. you allow complete anarchy arresting anarchy? and not arresting arresting and not arresting at least the situation is of anarchy without death and here it would have been anarchy no, you, with why? multiple deaths no but why should it be shooting nobody is considering shooting think of tear gas water the, cannons arrest i don't think they were not even ready they did not imagine so much crowd was there they anticipated crowd of 2000 so to 3000 it was a complete with, failure of the intelligence so they were not ready with tear gas and they were not ready they with water cannons they were not ready with in the first place yeah so then they weren't ready with uh, for shooting either they were ready for shooting and that's why that many police later on said that we if we were given freedom we would have shot 
many police said. In fact, Arup Patnaik had to go for not taking action. Finally, yeah, that is true. But the point is, in one day, after yeah, the, because uh, if you are, if a state is going to admit that exactly we can't control a mob, exactly. Twenty-four hours, a report went to Chief Minister. Yes, that Arup Patnaik should go, and uh, Chief exactly. Minister made. Actually, many people think that uh, Chief Minister made a decision after Raj Thakre made a speech. That's wrong. Chief Minister was given a report within twenty-four hours after the event, and I yet. Looking back, I personally think Arup Patnaik showed restraint. It could be uh, interpreted as being soft. Uh, more than soft, foolish. Uh, I won't call it foolish. Because you presume, we, I, there's no point repeating ourselves, but I presume. Yeah, you presume a hypothetical, yes, situation, hypothetical situation where you will have a yeah. completely anarchic yes, yeah, police absolutely. who will shoot. They will not, and but you have police who are obedient when they tell him do, when they tell them don't arrest. So why would this yeah. sudden Obedient police who is listening to Patnaik to not arrest who suddenly start shooting obedience, wildly. It is obedience which suits their convictions. Police in Mumbai are no less convinced of their caste and religion and uh, political bias. Whichever way it is, if they had to agree to not arresting, they would have also had to. So agree it's not a question of order. It's also following their own bias. That would have meant that the police commissioner and the police share the bias. No, that's carrying a hypoth hypothetical situation to Further. to their psychological thing. No, that, but we that have they seen will that. But the point is that. But we have seen that if, in 1992. But that was a we have seen that in 1993. But they were shooting. But that doesn't mean that they have to repeat in the same situation. In 1993, they entered the Muslim shops and Muslim shops and shot them. But point Mr. blank, Mr. Kekar, in this situation, this was completely different because you have misbehaved in another situation. It doesn't mean that you make that atone mean. for it in, a, in One, a wrong situation. I will not endorse that point of view. But point is, we have seen in 1992 and 93. How police acted recklessly, how police acted communally, and how Sri Krishna Commission finally condemned, but they did not implement the Sri Krishna Commission report fully. And if that kind of thing had happened, Mumbai would have burned for next. Uh, this is hypothesis. This no, is hypothesis. Mumbai would have burned like 1993. It's completely for, hypothetical. Uh, yeah, it is hypothesis. Because yeah. you know you're you're bringing the scars and the nightmare yeah. of, of the past yeah. and projecting it in a situation which is actually completely different. Different, but perhaps worse. No, completely different. After Gujarat, anything can happen anywhere. Yes, it, it could have even happened uh, now, even after this this situation. Yeah, but as it is hypothesis, I can say, uh, anybody can say it is hypothesis, so it would not happen also. Fair mm. enough. Okay. Now, in what does your paper do today in terms of the community in Mumbai? We do a lot of, as a paper, a lot of what you can call socially uh, relevant projects, like save water, conserve water, pull you know, kind of green movement, mm -hmm. so many in so many, in all these areas. Aurangabad and Nasik are main cities, emerging metros, not immediately, mm -hmm. but emerging metros in future, good cities, large cities with all the modern facilities, whereas Solapur, Jagav and Ammanagar are relatively small cities or you can say third cities. So I am finding myself absolutely compatible and happy with this because it's a completely new project. I have always worked in metropolitan area in Mumbai primarily so and sometimes in Delhi. Different. This is for the first time I am getting opportunity to work in Mufisil area. And Mufisil area which is essentially economically backward, socially backward, drought prone. So I think it is connecting myself with uh, the actual Mufisil people more actively than I could have been mm -hmm. able to act in Maharashtra times or Lok Sattva and certainly not economic times. The difference between language journalism uh, and English journalism is English journalism, you know, puts you in a sort of, uh, you know, kind of you are distant. Mm -hmm. You are distant from the masses. Yes. You know, when I write, even if I had written a very same article, in fact, in English, nobody would have come to throw stones at my house because I wrote in Marathi. It touches straight. No, there the are enough emotion. English. There's enough English. But journal, not so many actions against uh, editors moves. attacking their houses. Well, uh, Hindi yes. Yeah, no, but for example, Outlook ma uh, magazine's offices were ransacked by the Shiv no, Sena. Yeah, but they were mm. ransacked by the Shiv Sena, by Shiv Sena. They were not mm. ransacked by the English reading audience. That's what I'm saying. Mm. Shiv Sena will attack, RSS will mm. attack, Bajrang Dal will attack, so on. They will attack. But they are, the attackers are essentially in the language group. Yes. Not the uh, quote unquote secular modern 21st century audience mm -hmm. of the English media. Well, so in this particular medium, I'm happy. 
Well, thank you very much, Mr. No, Kutu. no, my pleasure. Thank Unless uh, thank you. it has offended any of you. Why should it offend <laughs> us? Thank you.